this week. It's time for Security Money. Rubric saves the index as it keeps climbing. In our second segment, we air two pre-recorded interviews from RSA Conference 2024 from Blue Mara and Level Blue. Business Security Weekly starts now. This is a Security Weekly production for security professionals by security professionals. Please visit securityweekly.com forward slash subscribe to subscribe to all the shows on our network. It's the show where we explore the business of security to improve the security of business. Your trusted source for actionable insights on leadership, communication, and innovation. Get ready for Business Security Weekly. High-value employees have become the path of least resistance and a key source of compromise for corporations. Attacks against executives can compromise their personal accounts, enable corporate breaches, and can even compromise their reputation, wealth, and physical security. Black Cloak understands that an executive's personal digital footprint is crucial to enterprise security. We provide concierge cybersecurity solutions tailored for executives, safeguarding their personal data, devices, and online presence. Experience peace of mind knowing that your team is protected with Black Cloak Digital Executive Protection. Secure your digital life with blackcloak.io. Visit us now at securityweekly.com forward slash blackcloak. Enterprises today are using hundreds of SaaS applications. Are you reaping their productivity and innovation benefits or are you lost in the sprawl? Enter Savvy Security. They help you surface every SaaS app, identity, and risk, so you can shine a light on shadow IT and risky identities. Savvy monitors your entire SaaS attack surface to help you efficiently eliminate toxic risk combinations and prevent attacks. So go on, get savvy about SaaS and harness the productivity benefits. Fuel innovation while closing security gaps. Visit securityweekly.com forward slash savvy to learn more. Did you know that Active Directory is exploited in nine out of 10 cyber attacks? With access to Active Directory, attackers can gain control of your network. To keep attackers out, you need to find and fix Active Directory security gaps. Meet Purple Knight, a free security assessment tool that scans your environment for hundreds of vulnerabilities and helps you fix the problems. Ready to reduce your Active Directory attack surface? Download Purple Knight, the number one Active Directory security vulnerability assessment tool. Visit securityweekly.com forward slash Sempiris. Welcome to Business Security Weekly. This is episode number 351, recorded May 20th, 2024. I am your host, Matt Alderman. Joining me remotely for this segment is my co-host, Mr. Jason Albuquerque. How you doing, Jason? Well, how are you, Matt? I'm good. uh, It was a rainy weekend here with tons of soccer involved, and we were traveling all over New England with with my boy. But, uh, but shout out to him. He just got his, he plays for the University of Rhode Island Rams premier team for his age group. And he just won team MVP award for the year. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah. We actually had a decent uh, weekend here. It stopped raining for, for a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to when football starts again because my Bruins got knocked out. Hopefully the Celtics can carry the, you know, carry New England for a little while and uh, continue on. So looks like we're playing Indiana. Yes. Yeah, I did. I watched the Bruin game Tuesday night when they took it to game to the next game, but then yep, yeah, yep. lost game six. So rough, rough. <laughs> Get ready for an electrifying experience at the 15th annual Identiverse. Join 3000 plus identity professionals at the Aria Resort and Casino in Vegas on May 28th to the 31st of 2024 for four days packed with dynamic learning and collaboration. Don't miss out on keynotes, including Dene DeFore, CS, CISO of United Airlines, Tucker Bryant, entrepreneur and former Googler, George Roberts, director of identity and access engineering at McDonald's, and many more. As a community member, receive 25% off your Identiverse 2024 tickets using code IDV. 24-SW25. Register today at securityweekly.com forward slash IDV 2024. Dive into cybersecurity with Cyber Risk Alliance for exclusive insights from RSA Conference 2024. Explore executive interviews with industry leaders, uncovering visionary perspectives on threats and strategies. Delve into curated articles on trends and innovations, equipping yourself with essential knowledge 
for today's cyber landscape. Visit securityweekly.com forward slash RSAC for expert guidance and inspiration in navigating cybersecurity uh, challenges confident, confidently. Com- I was going to say confidentially, but it's <laughs> confidently. All right, Jason. So security money. We've been doing this every quarter since I started uh, way back. I started tracking the data in 2018. I did my first segment in 2019. And one of those segments, we covered the GameStop phenomenon. So I want to do a quick flashback before we break into the security money, because there was some interesting activity around GameStop last week. And I was like, oh my gosh, you were on that segment. You, Paul and I did that segment together. And I was like, oh my gosh, I I have to tell the story. So BSW 204, February 1st, 2021, it's named Diamond Hands. So Johnny named it Diamond Hands. Because we did. That's right. Yeah. Because we're talking about the GameStop phenomenon, right? And so at the time, we covered how Wall Street bets had hacked Wall Street and the hedge funds and sent GME on this big short squeeze, right? So here's the backstory. As that was going on, I decided to buy some shares of GameStop. So I bought 44 shares at the time. Uh, this is back in 21. I, I, and I just bought it and I just sat on it. I had no yep. intention of doing anything with that, with that money. Uh, so it did go through a four to one stock split later, uh, a year or two ago. And so I'm sitting on 176 shares at an average price of $32 and nine cents a share. Just sitting there. Yep. And my wife's been like, Hey, what is, how's that GameStop going? I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not even paying attention to it. <laughs> right. So Monday night after we finished the show last week, I hopped on an airplane to go to Detroit because I had some client meetings. So I'm watching CNBC and there's stories all about GameStop all over CNBC. So lo and behold, Jason, GameStop uh, the previous week was starting to notch up. And I noticed the stock kind of kind of notching up. Yeah, yeah. So on Monday night, stock closed at like 30 bucks a share. It was up like 74%. And it was up almost another 10 plus percent after market. So the stock's sitting at like, I don't know, 33, 34 bucks a share. So I get off the plane in Detroit. I said, let me put in a sell order. Just in case, if this thing keeps going up, yep. you know, I'll, I'll exit my, my stock. So I'm in, I'm in the shuttle going to Hertz. And I go into my account. I go, all right, I'm going to sell 170 of the 176 shares because I don't want to sell it all. I'm going to hold on to a few. Yeah, yeah. So I put in a sell order at $38 a share. I go to bed. Next yep. morning, we go to the client. I'm doing an on-site. I'm not even paying attention. We get done. We head up to the next hotel and I look at my phone and I'm like, holy cow. GameStop opened on the 21st on Tuesday. It opened at $64 a share. Right. Yep. Spiked. <laughs> I sold 170 shares at an average price of $63.56 on that spike. 98% gain. Pure dumb luck because as soon as it spiked, the stock dropped. It's it was trading in the twenties the last time I looked at it. Yeah, yeah. So so you had you had told me on the on the pre show banter about this because I wasn't paying attention last week and you know, I, I quickly brought up an article and, and it's as of, I think, two days ago, it was like $22, but it spiked to $64.83, a quadruple. Yep. It's absolutely amazing. I sold my share. That's the oh. highest. That it, it actually says in the article, it's the highest it's been since 2021. Mm-hmm. Exactly right. Yeah. I mean, I timed it perfectly. I mean, it was pure dumb luck. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like. Oh my gosh! I got to tell the story because I've been sitting on the stock since right, right, that, right. since that since that yeah. time. And I mean, oh, I'm I'm looking I'm looking through and I'm looking at some of the other meme uh, meme stocks and they're 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 jumping too. The meme coins like Shiba jumped up a little bit. Like you got a whole bunch of them starting to jump. So I just brought it up yeah. on my phone to do a little research. Yeah, do a little research. It's a little interesting, but it was like I said, it was kind of pure dumb luck that I just happened yeah. to catch it, happened to get a quick little exit out of. I still hey. own, like I said, I still own six shares. Cause I wanted to see where it was going to go. I, I mean, like I said, I got lucky selling it at 64. Absolutely. No, so, it's yeah. great. It's beautiful. Yeah. It should work. <laughs> yep. 
All right. So let's dig into the security money segment. Yes, we're planning let's do it. To do today. All right. So as everybody knows, quarterly, I update the index, kind of um, update all the funding announcements, et cetera. So first, Splunk is out. As everybody knows, Cisco finished the acquisition of Splunk. So I was struggling for a while thinking about how was I going to bring in a 25th to keep in the index? Luckily, Rubric goes public and kind of saves the index because <laughs> I needed another stock in the index to keep it at 25. Right, so right. Rubric, Rubric comes in. So Rubric goes public on the 25th of April. Uh, they priced it at 32. It closed at 37. And on Friday, it was trading at $36.56. It's like a $6.5 billion valuation company. It was yep. really, when you think about it, Jason, of, of any of the IPOs lately, it's a pretty successful IPO. They are. They're on, they're on fire right now. I mean, you know, it, it, it also helps that they're, you know, they're backed by Microsoft. Microsoft has a little bit of a, a backing there. They're also, um, you know, the, from, from what I've seen, uh, Bipul Sina, who, who he's the founder but he's also part of Lightspeed Ventures. There's going to be a little bit of trend that we're going to see with Lightspeed Ventures kind of throughout the throughout this conversation that we're going to have with some of these other companies that have, <laughs> that are on the index. So, he's he's doing a pretty good job with Rubric and with his with his venture partners, no doubt about it. Yep. Yeah, for sure. So, I had to refactor the uh index all the weightings, which I did as of 425. So, index closed on Friday at 2329.05. It's a 132.9% gain since its inception, which is up from last quarter. Did not hit a record, but it it is slowly trending back up towards some of those record numbers we saw back in tw late 21, early 22. Yeah. Which is good. It's it's good that we're starting to get on track. I mean, the economy hasn't helped lately. No. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, uh, organizations are in financial constraints. Um, spending is down. People are holding on to more cash, um, just to kind of see where this economy is going to go. And obviously, inflation is through the roof right now. So, I mean, it's not '80s inflation, but it's 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 the highest that you know I've seen since I've been an adult. So, <laughs> so at the end of the day, it's uh, you know people people are saving their money and, and keeping that cash on hand. But it's it's good to see things starting to open up, you know, and and spending happening again, which is gonna which is gonna help. Yeah, and you see this in the results. Uh, before yeah. I get to some of the results, Nasdaq closed it. 16,685 and 97 cents up 151.47%. So the NASDAQ is still performing better than the index right now. And typically when the markets are down, the index does worse. When the markets are positive, the index does better. It still hasn't fully caught up over the, the five year plus range that I've been tracking it yet, but it's getting closer. It, it's definitely closed the distance between where the index is and where, where the NASDAQ is. So here's what's interesting. So I, I, I go through all the earnings reports for everybody in the index, and I calculate the average revenue and profit beat. And here's what's interesting. Revenue beat was 0.74% on average, which is down from last quarter. Same with profit beat at 16.39% on average is down from last quarter. So what you're seeing, Jason, is you're definitely seeing a narrowing of yep. the revenue and profit beat. And I think that goes back to your economy questions, right? right. The, the economy is still tight. And so you're still seeing this coming through in the numbers, both from a revenue and profit. The beats aren't as big as they used to be. Things are getting very narrow in, in those ranges. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we're trending in a way where, you know, Q3, Q4, things start to open up. I, you know, I, I, it's always tough in an election year, no matter what. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed those trends during election years. It kind of, you know, things tighten up a little bit and people wondering about where, where the, where the country's going to go, where the economy is going to go. And I'm hoping as we start queuing into where election season is going to take us. Or yeah, we're going to be in a better spot or at least trending to a better spot. Yeah. And there's a lot of pressure on the fed to try to cut rates. Yep. Right. And you saw with some of the, the latest CPI numbers, not as bad as expected. People are hoping. But then some of the Fed governors came out last week and said, look, we, we'd rather hold on rates longer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to make sure. So I'm not sure if we're going to get a rate cut. And I right, think everybody right. wants one because 
a rate cut would be very positive for the market. Right. Um, but I don't, I don't know if we're going to get one. Yeah, I don't know either because I've, you know, I've heard, you know, with some of the employment numbers that have come out, I've also heard some scuttlebutt on the side saying, yeah, some of that difference is because people have fallen off of their unemployment benefits. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily that unemployment's lower; it's that the benefits that are being given out people fell off of their their cap. Yeah. All right. Um, then I go through and I look at the best and worst performing stocks. Uh, best performing last quarter, one span again, CyberArk and SecureWorks. Worst performing, NetScout again, F5 and Akamai. Now, here's what's interesting, um, Jason, in, in, in that a little bit. After RSA conference, I always do a financial um, Q&A. Um, I'm part of these different advisory groups, and yep. they always want my take after RSA. One of the trends I talked about and they asked me about is trends on the identity side and trends on the networking side. If you look at the results of one span on the identity side, very positive, very good performing, right? One span cyber yep. arc identity plays. Yeah. If you look at the worst performing, it's NetScout F5 and Akamai, which are more networking. network side. Yeah. Uh huh. Right. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting to see what um, what that what that side of the uh, of the vertical is going to do, right? I mean, more more and more is getting pushed out to cloud. More and more of that is you know the big three. So I, I can see that. Yeah, and it's definitely showing up in some of these uh, performances when it comes to because this isn't the first time Akamai's been on the worst perform or F five has been on the worst performing either, right? No, that's a, no, that's a trend already. Yeah. Yeah, they just weren't last quarter, but they've been on this list. They've been on it before, yeah. Absolutely. SecureWorks has been on the worst side of this. They've actually performed pretty well. They actually had a really, a decent beat this last quarter, um, which is interesting, right? They've shifted yeah. from a pure services company to more of a product company and selling yep. their platform to other MSSPs. And they've transitioned from a service revenue to a product revenue model. There's still a split, but but they have. Right, right definitely improve their their kind of overall uh, unfortunately they're still on the worst rated list though <laughs> they are <laughs> they perform well but <laughs> their ratings are still low they gotta work the on analysts them. do not like them they don't like secure works again yeah. they don't like qualis again and i want to talk about that one in a second yeah, and yeah. fastly is on the worst and i look at qualis qualis is one of the few companies that when they went public, they were profitable and have been profitable ever since they went public, but they get beat up by the analysts and it's not because of profitability, it's revenue growth. Yeah. They, a lot of the analysts I talk to would like to see more revenue growth out of Qualys, but Qualys has always been profitable, but profit's not enough for some of the analysts yeah. um, when it comes to Qualys, which I, I don't know. I, I, I like profitability personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they want to see more. Yep. <laughs> hey, you know that that's on the analysts, right? <laughs> yep. Uh, best rated CrowdStrike again, CyberArk again, and Lidos. Yep. Look, CrowdStrike's on fire, guys. Like, yeah. I went back and I looked. The last time I redid the index was May of twenty three. So a, a little over a year ago is the last time I touched the the index. At that time. CrowdStrike was trading right around $100 a share. I think it was like $104 a share. They're $330 plus a share. Like their yep. stock in the last year has like tripled. They are on fire. And they're, we'll talk about it later, actively acquiring. Yeah. Just crazy. And, and you know, I got asked about this on this analyst call. And I'm like, guys, like I, you can't bet against them right now. I'm right. sorry. You just can't. Uh -huh. they, like their yeah. stock has just performed so well. Yeah, they're doing incredible. Yeah. Uh, let's see. IPOs, we talked through rubric. Cato Networks is supposedly I in a 2025. There's yep, got to be Cato. Yeah. There's got to be a number of companies out there eyeing 2025. Yeah, and, and to be honest with you, Cato, Cato is yet another one of those light speed venture partners, right? That's that's who invested in them. And I mean, you know, I've I've known Cato for years now from the sassy space when they were coming up in you know, my last organization, we were partners with theirs, but uh yeah, they're, they're coming in hot, let me tell you. All right, let's get into the acquisitions in, in Q1. As you, as you said, Jason, earlier, the big boys keep acquiring, right? The 
Sentinel ones, the crowd strikes, the octas, they're definitely putting their cash to use in mm-hmm. acquiring companies that continue to build out their platforms. Yeah, 100 percent I mean, you know, ping safe, uh, you know, acquisition by Sentinel One, getting into that cloud native application protection space. Um, I think I think it's it's great for them to start building out their singularity platform. It's a great investment for them to kind of diversify and, and start really bringing in that that comprehensive security solution to the cloud app side of the aisle. Um, you know, we, we had a surprising one with SonicWall. Um, you know, making a lot of acquisitions lately. You know, over the course of the last six to eight months, they've been they've been making some surprising acquisitions, and they brought in Banyan. Um, you know, more on that that sassy side of the aisle, that that security service edge um, solution. So you can see that they're trying to trying to really diversify now and and you know build the brand back up in the space by going uh, by going sassy and ZTNA and making those strategic acquisitions. And then uh, you know Zero Fox, they you know they had uh, uh, an acquisition by Havili and and you know three hundred fifty million in cash that they that they put out there for Zero. Yeah, and I think Zero Fox is interesting, right? Because Zero Fox came into the market not in a traditional IPO; they came via a SPAC. Right. And I think the challenge for the Zero Fox team is I think they expected a higher valuation. It, I think it's created some challenges for the company not to get some of those bigger valuations and raise the cash. And then you have somebody like Havily coming in and just picking it up for $350 million in cash. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, just I think it's just the stories around these SPACs because there's been a couple of them in here that you just see that. They came to market via SPAC, but their exits right. weren't pretty. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then, hey, you know, we talked about CrowdStrike, and, and you know, they just uh, they just acquired Flow, so that takes them into that data security posture management side of the aisle again, expanding, um, you know, their their uh, their platform and, and really get, getting into that data. Security. Yep. A uh, couple I wanted to Keep cover. Going. Yeah, the the Elevate Security by Mimecast acquisition. Having worked at Living Security, I'm very familiar with this product. Uh, this is uh, Masha Sadova's company. Um, this is going to be an interesting space, Jason. Right? I, I see a lot of consolidation in the security awareness training, phishing, email security space. You bring somebody like Elevate with some of the human elements in yep. to tighten that market. Just continues to put a ton of pressure on that space. I think it's a good acquisition by Mimecast might see a few others in this space. Yeah, and again, building out that ecosystem, right? That ecosystem of of feature functionality. So that way we you know they can they can cover the space, you know, and and really bringing all those strengths together. Same, you know, same same on the traditional side. They're just they're going down that ecosystem path, that platform. Yep. Uh let's see what else is in here. Uh and trust. Oh, I think on Fido might have been one of those SPACs, by the way. Anyways, just some okay. interesting moves. Oh, and and Gem Security by Wiz. Guys, Wiz is killing it too. Like we were talking about CrowdStrike killing it. Mm-hmm. Wiz is killing it. On the cloud security side, man, I see these guys in a lot of places. They're they're one of the fastest companies to a hundred million. Like they're doing really, really well. And they're they're taking some of that investment and they're putting it to work. Beautiful. Yeah, it's good to see the investments happening. Absolutely. Yeah. A couple interesting layoff trends. There weren't any, I didn't see any for the public companies, but Orca Securities lay, laid off 15%. Trend Micro, 2%. Proofpoint, 280 people, about 6%. So we're still seeing some of those layoffs in right. that Q1. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, it's it's the economy, right? You, you can you can kind of see with with the way the economy is today, organizations are tightening their belts and and still going through some of those layoff and reduction in force practices. So. Yeah. Yep. Everybody's trying to figure out how to reduce their cash burns and keep themselves. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Profitable. Cash on hand. Yeah. Need cash on hand. Got to keep Ooh. that runway going. <laughs> no doubt about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the the interesting merger that you had put in here for Q4 was the Cohesity and Veritas. Um, you know, way back when in the olden days, I was I was a Semantic guy, and and you know, um, Semantic had the uh, the acquisition of Veritas at that point in time. You know, back in uh, I was like 2003, 2002, 2003, somewhere around there. And uh, you know, to see 40 years of of a Veritas in the industry. Um, it's going to cease to exist from what I'm reading. So that, that brand will be completely gone after this. 
And uh, I, I know that, you know, they're bringing over uh, the net backup side, the Alta SAS data protection side. But um, some of the things like eDiscovery and Enterprise Vault, those are going by the wayside. They're probably going to be spun out into a new company. I think they're going to call it like Data Co. or something like that. We'll see if they survive. But uh, it's pretty wild to see, uh, you know, 40 years in the industry and all of a sudden it's going to peter away. <laughs> well, well, that was like last week or uh, two weeks ago when we were at RSA seeing the Com Vault, right? Yeah. The old backup yeah. recovery guys. Like right. they're still around. Veritas is going to go to the wayside, but. Yep. That's a blast from the past. I hadn't oh, seen big it in a time. long time. Big time. So yeah, it's, it's just interesting to see that. And uh yeah, I mean the the days of Eritas obviously are gone and they, you know, they 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 couldn't keep up with the uh, the innovation. So hey, this is what happens. Where uh where they add value, they're gonna get swallowed up and everything else is gonna get shifted away. Yep, absolutely right. Well, that's a good wrap of last quarter. Thank you, Jason, for joining me. We're gonna Great to be here. Yes. We're gonna take a quick break. And then air two pre two pre recorded interviews from RSA Conference 2024 from Blue Mara and Level Blue, I think formerly known as AT and T Cybersecurity, by the way. Next week is Memorial Day, so don't miss out on our Vault segment. And we'll see you in two weeks on Business Security Weekly. <laughs>